What's going on you guys and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than my usual videos. I like to be a lot more bullish and positive in my videos, but in this video we're going to be talking about a little bit more of a touching subject. We're going to be talking about how the Russian invasion of Ukraine can affect the stock market in the short term and the long term. So in this video we're going to be breaking down an article that I found and then I'll be giving you guys my thoughts on this article and then we'll be talking about whether or not the stock market, the US stock market is going to tank sell off or if it's going to be good in the long term and short term so if you guys want to see all that stay tuned and you guys already know cue that intro Before we get started with this video, let's take a look at how the S&P 500 has been doing as of recent. So we started off the year at about 4,800 and we are sitting at $4,384.65, which means year to date we are down 8.5%, which is terrible, especially after last year. Last year we were doing so well, we started off 3,800 and of course we peaked out around 4,000-ish, 800, 4,800-ish, and then we're into this giant sell-off. So... With that being said, yeah, this year definitely has not been the best. It's not only because of the Russian invasion, it's because of fears of hyperinflation, fears of the Fed raising rates more than they are expected to, you know, so it's not just because it's an invasion. And in fact, we're doing a lot better than the Russian stock market, which dropped 33% as of recent, which is apparently the fifth worst crash in market history for them. So... I guess we're not really doing as bad as them, but with this invasion fear, who knows if we could sell off even more and who knows if we'll ever recover from this. And with a lot of people saying that we were in a bubble, especially with the S&P 500 raising so much over the past, pretty much over the past year, a lot of people were saying we were in a bubble. So we're going to be figuring out in this video whether or not this crash is going to continue to happen or if this is just a major correction or if this is just fear for the moment so with that being said let's find out and take a look at that article so here's an article that really does show what could possibly happen to your investments because of this russia ukraine conflict and as always i'll leave a link in the description with this article so you guys can check out this article in full length for yourselves if you want to but anyways i personally really do like this article because it does align with a lot of my beliefs as well as backs it up with facts so of course you guys might have your opinions so definitely leave a comment down below and tell me if you guys think this article is wrong or tell me your own opinions but anyways with that being said let's take a look at this article so the article starts off by speaking facts about the general picture on what's going on in the world especially across the global markets and what this article is saying is basically risky assets are starting to suck and some of these risky assets include things like penny stocks momentum stocks backs and altcoins to a certain extent meanwhile on the other side of things Things, commodities such as gold and oil are starting to rise and typically that could be a good thing if you own commodities but what it really means is we are heading closer and closer to a risk off movement where we aren't buying things like stocks we are buying safe haven stuff like oil and commodities when that happens unfortunately the s p typically starts to sell off and as this article mentions we are officially in correction territory so what are we going to do at this point is the market going to completely start to tip over and sell off even more or are we going to bounce right back and do well well in my opinion when fear starts to get really high and people are buying commodities like gold and oil it's not really a good sign, but at the same time, it could be a great thing if you're a long-term investor. And that's why I really like this article because they put it here in one line, don't panic. And I'm on their side 100% because I believe that this actually creates a huge buying opportunity. And as unfortunate as it sounds, this is a great time to buy, even if this conflict is not a good thing, you know what I mean? But either way, at the end of the day, I think that this is a great time to buy. And we'll be looking at more of the reasons why in just a second. This graphic over here basically backs up the idea that I had earlier where I believe that this is a great buying opportunity, especially for long term investors. And here's why this graphic basically shows that this is how stocks do after major events. And we've got a list of about 36, 37 major events. And these events are things, for example, we got the North Korean invasion of South Korea, Suez Canal, we got Nixon resigning, Reagan shooting iraq war starting and so on there's tons of different events over here and then we've also got the s p 500 returns in one month three months six months and 12 months so we're not going to sit here and count down every single thing so i went ahead and did it myself so in the one month territory 
21 out of 36 events typically end up negative for the stock market. So that's about 58% of the times things go bad in the stock market in the short term. But in the long term, after 12 months, things are looking a little bit better. 12 out of 36 times the stock market goes down, which means the stock market in 12 months typically stays down for about 33% of the time. And as of recent, let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times the stock market has been doing good as of recent. So with that being said, if history does ever reflect anything and show what's going to happen in the future, in the short term, yes, we might sell off. But that does create a huge buying opportunity for the long term, especially after 12 months. So if you're a long term investor, this could be a time to buy heavier on the dips. It might hurt a lot in the short term. But as this article said earlier, don't panic. Play your cards right. And in the long term, you should be doing well, especially further out than 12 months. 12 months is still kind of a short term, especially if you're a long term investor. But who really knows what's going to happen in the long term future? Personally, I think this isn't a time to panic. This is a time to buy the dip and buy this dip opportunity. So that's just my personal beliefs. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. But unfortunately, things aren't always as easy as that. We've got a lot more things going on. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, we've got to worry about hyperinflation. We also got the Fed possibly raising rates more than we expected, which could really, really hurt the stock market. Man, that would really suck. And who knows if we, the US, decides to enter into this conflict, man, that could definitely be a push to a recession, which would definitely suck. But nobody really knows. And here's the thing. You can hedge yourself by having cash. You don't necessarily need to buy the dip right away. I mean, if the stock market were to sell off 20, 30% and then you held cash, it's, I know right now with inflation, we're technically losing money, but if the stock market were to sell off so much more and then you were to buy the dip, that's a big brain play. But again, nobody can really foresee what's going to happen in the future. And that's why personally, I'm just putting in the same mode every single time. And as the market does decide to dip further and further then i'll slightly put in a little bit more so let's just give an example let's say i'm investing a hundred dollars every single week dollar cost averaging if the s p 500 were to dip down below that eight and a half percent year to date let's say we go down ten percent now maybe i'll do 110 dollars if we go down 20 percent, maybe i do 150 dollars, and so on and that's my personal strategy again let me know down below what you guys are planning to do Maybe even if you guys were to buy commodities in the short term, remember we were looking at the one month chart up up above over here, man, we got 21 out of 36 times. So that's about 58% of the time. Maybe even in the short term, we're looking to buy commodities and then eventually sell out of those commodities or hedge yourself with those commodities and then buy the long term stocks that we know and love those high growth tech companies. So at this point in time, we don't really know what's going to happen. And I guess it's not as easy as that, because if it was as easy as I made it sound earlier, we would all be buying this dip. So again, let me know in the comments down below what you guys are planning to do. This person over here, this individual that wrote this article, believes that at this stage, recession is not a concern. Personally, I think that there is a still a percent of a chance that it might happen, but I don't want to cause fear or anything like that. Man, at this point, I'm doing what I always do, and that's buy the dip, dollar cost average every single week. But again, who really knows at this point? So let me know down in the comments down below. And guys, remember, everybody eats.